we're slightly ahead of schedule, but I think we'll just keep going. And we'll now hear about membership inference attacks in relation with uh, adversarially robust models. And this is going to be a talk by uh, Li Wei. Yeah. Thanks. So, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Li Wei from Princeton University. And uh, my topic today is about membership inference attacks against uh, adversarially robust uh, deep learning models. This is a work with my advisor, Pratik, and uh, collaborator, Rita, from NUS. So let's start the story. So we all know deep learning has achieved great success in the past uh, few years. Like we now use deep learning for image classification, for natural language processing, and for game playing. However, at the focus of this workshop, we know that there exists a lot of vulnerabilities for deep learning models, whether in the security domain and in the privacy domain. So for the, for the security issues, usually the adversary tries to make the model generate some wrong predictions on some test inputs. In general, there are two kinds of attacks. One is the invasion attack, which is also called adversarial example. I guess we already saw a lot of these examples in the morning session on the attacks part. So basically, it put up the test inputs a little bit to cause the model generate the wrong prediction. So the second category is called poison attack. Different from the evasion attack, the poison attack focus on the attacking the training process by manipulating some training examples such that the model, the final trained model will be compromised to have some wrong predictions at some inputs. Well, from the, this is for the security part. If we look at the privacy part, uh, a lot of papers just uh, came out in recent years trying to review the privacy issues of uh, deep learning models. So for example, we have the membership inference attack where the adversary tries to guess whether an input was from the training data set or not. We also have the property inference attack where the adversary tries to learn some global property of the whole training data set. And uh, we also have the model inversion attack where the adversary tries to reconstruct uh, some meaningful inputs from the model predictions. Also, we can also assume the machine learning model provider is the adversary such that he or she could maliciously modify the training algorithm to memorize some sensitive information of the training data set. So along from finding all these kind of security, privacy, kind of attack vector for deep learning models, there are also a lot of work trying to protect uh, the model, trying to make the deep learning model more secure and more private. So here I just uh, give some examples. This is the difference from the security part. Uh, here is that some works on the defense from the privacy issues. This is not my focus today. And uh, here, uh, our, our motivation is that one of the big limitation for current work is the security domain and the privacy domain, they are typically have been considered separately. So it's not clear whether the defenses proposed in one domain will have some bad impacts on the other domain. Therefore, in our work, we try to combine the security and privacy together for deep learning models. Specifically, we measure the membership inference risk of adversarially deep, deep learning models. So for membership inference, this is a privacy issue. And for adversarially robust models, that's the model proposed to defend against the adversary example, which is the security issue. OK, now let's briefly discuss about both the adversary robustness and the membership inference. Yeah, I guess you already see this kind of picture a lot of times, but here I, I will just brief mention it again. So adversary example, also invasion attack. Here the adversary tries to 
add a small perturbation to the input such that from the human still it looks like the same as the benign inputs, but the model will just uh, give a wrong prediction as the different from the benign inputs. So defenses are proposed uh, in recent years and some of them are kind of effective. In general, those defenses are proposed uh, to redesign the training algorithm. If we look at the training process for the, for the natural training, usually the machine learning models are trained to reduce the prediction loss on the whole training data set. And uh, when we consider the adversary case, when we consider the generation of adversary example, we can formulate the attack as a maximization problem, trying to increase the prediction loss under the small perturbation constraints. So therefore, if we want to design the model to be robust against the adversary example, the typical way is to include the adversary loss during your training process, such that here is the min-max maximization optimization problem. However, the problem is not easy to solve, mainly because the inner maxi uh, maximization problem, there is no effective way for us to exactly solve the maximum for deep, uh, deep, uh, deep neural networks. And uh, in fact, a lot of defenses are just uh, proposed different ways to appro approximate this kind of adversary loss. Uh, yeah, here is the brief introduction about like how we are going to train models robust uh, adversarial examples. Now let's switch to the privacy part. So for the membership inference attack, here is the setting. Uh, given the target model, given some inputs, the adversary tries to guess whether those inputs was used to train the target model or not. Uh, this is a privacy issue because the membership actually can reveal a lot of sensitive information of the individual. For example, um, if your record is in a hospital's data set, it really means that you was once uh, patient in that hospital. So now let's try to combine the security and privacy together. So first of all, uh, when talking about membership inference attack, previous work has shown that the success of uh, membership inference is related to the model overfitting. Uh, this is easy to understand because assume if you have a machine learning model with 100% train accuracy but only 50% test accuracy, of course you can just uh, easily perform the membership inference attack based on whether your input is correctly predicted or not. So the second point is also related to the model sensitivity with regard to the training data. The sensitivity is usually measured by that when you train, when you exclude one training data from the whole training data set and retrain the model, how much your retrained model will be uh, compared to the model trained with the whole training data set. That's the sensitivity measurement. So usually a larger, a larger sensitivity of the model means that the model's performance on training examples and test examples are different. And on the other hand, if we look at the adversary robustness, to make the model robust against the adversary example, usually the model are trained to make the model prediction keep the same for a small area around each training point. So here I plot the square around each point, which means uh, L infinity norm for the, for the inputs. And uh, first of all, because there are already, there are already several papers showing, showing that when you train a model to be robust uh, against the adversary example, 
probably you will decrease the test accuracy. And this means a larger overfitting. And second, when we think about the robust training process, now the model actually not trained on a single training point. It's actually trained on a small LP ball of each point, which means now actually each point has kind of a, a larger influence on the training data, uh, on the trained model. In, this also means that now the model sensitivity with regard to the training data for the robust model is much larger than the natural model. Uh, therefore, we conclude that if you train a model to be robust uh, against the uh, adversary, they robust uh, to be against the adversary example, you may make the model more vulnerable to membership inference attack. And uh, here is an example where we plot the histogram of cross entropy loss for both natural model and robust model. Those two models are for the CFATEN datasets, and we directly borrowed from Mandarin's paper about adversary training, which is one of the most effective defense methods currently. So we plot the loss dis uh, distribution for both the training and test. Training is the training data means the members, and test the data means the non-members. So in the plot, the blue one is for the member, the, r the red one is for the non-member, and they're over the purple means they're overlapping. So we can see that compared to the natural classifier, actually the robust classifier indeed has a larger divergence between the two loss distributions over the training and, and over the test. Therefore, this means a potential larger membership influence risk. Okay, so up to now, this is our intuition. Now I'm going to talk about our detailed membership influence attack. So first of, first of all, let's just uh, look at the paper proposed by Shokri two years ago using the shadow training technique to perform membership influence. The, pro the process works by first uh, we train a lot of shadow models to simulate the behavior of the target model. Then we collect the outputs of the shadow models on both the shadow training data and the shadow test data. Finally, we use all those outputs to train a binary classifier because our membership inference just uh, classify whether it's from training data set or not, so it's a binary classifier. So later on, this method, uh, it was shown that we don't need all of the final prediction output. Instead, we can just uh, use one scalar value, which is, the, which is the prediction confidence. So in this example, the target model is F. The input feature is X, and the, the ground truth label is Y. So we only use one value, which is F, Y, X is the prediction probability corresponding to the correct label Y. And we compare this confidence with a preset threshold. If the confidence is larger, we will say, okay, this input is from training data set. Otherwise, we say it's not a member. So furthermore, we consider the worst case inference risk where we try different threshold values and finally we choose the one with the highest uh, inference accuracy. While in the practice, we can also follow Shockery's shallow training methods similarly to uh, choose the th uh, threshold value. Uh, just to uh, have more set up for our uh, inference attacks. So first of all, we sample the input from whether the training data set or test the data set with equal 50% probability. And uh, we measure the membership inference accuracy, membership inference precision, and recall, which are the typical metric used in membership inference attacks. Bec uh, because we 
sample the input from the training or from the test data sets with equal 50%. So a random guessing strategy will give you a 50% inference accuracy and 50% inference precision. And finally, we choose two uh, defense methods which are proposed against the uh, adversary example. One is adversary training proposed by Mandri et al. The second one is probable defense proposed by one quarter. So let's first uh, look at the results for adversary training. The quick summary is indeed adver adversary training will make the model more vulnerable to membership inference attack. So we just uh, use the CIFAR 10 models provided by Mandarin's GitHub repo to perform the membership inference. And we also slightly modify their code a little bit to train the SVHN classifiers. So here's the result. This is the natural one, which means unrobust model. If you look at the train accuracy and test accuracy, it's pretty good, pretty high. And if, if you look at the robustness, there is no robustness. Because uh, the ADV train and ADV test accuracy mean, means the accuracy we measured under the generation of adversary example. And uh, when we evaluate its privacy performance, we find the inference accuracy is around 57% which is not so high because a random guessing will have the 50% inference accuracy and this one is 57. On the other hand, if we perform the inference attack on the robust CFATEN models they provided, you can see that the test accuracy slightly decrease a, a little bit, but we have much better robustness, both the adversary train accuracy and adversary test accuracy are much improved. However, at the same time, the inference accuracy is also increased a lot. So now the membership inference accuracy is close to uh, 75. Like, it's a huge increase. This is the result for the SVHN. Also, when you train the model to be robust, it increased, the inference accuracy increases from uh, 56 to 64 percent. We also try to train the robust uh, classifiers with different adversary perturbation constraints. So here's the result. We use the same data set, same model architecture, but only different perturbation constraints. And uh, this is their inf uh, privacy performance. This is for the CFR and also for SVHN classifier. So the takeaway is if you train a robust model with a larger perturbation constraints, you will lose more privacy. So finally, let's look at the probable defense. So for this one, we don't observe the increase of membership inference for the robust model, but at the same time, we do you see that it will cause uh, a great drop of the accuracy performance? So this is the result. If you look at the, for example, if you look at the zero robust uh, CFATEN classifier, the train accuracy and the test accuracy is below 70%, which just means now the model actually kind of not, uh, doesn't fit the data set well. Okay, so to summarize the, the talk today, we combine the security and privacy together for machine learning models by, my, uh, by evaluating the membership inference risk of adversarially robust deep learning models. Among the two, uh, between the two methods, two defense methods, we find that adversary training will really increase the privacy risk against the uh, membership inference, and uh, the privacy leakage is related to the model's uh, adversary perturbation constraints. For probable defense, we don't observe the increase of 
membership inference risk for the robust model, but that comes with the drop of model accuracy. And finally, we suggest we need to, we really need to think about security and privacy together. Yeah, that's all my talk. Great. Any questions? Hi. Um, thanks for your talk. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, uh, when you're talking about the membership inference, you talked about a threshold that you increase to get the your inference attack yeah. percentage. So I'm guessing whatever the inference accuracies that you show is for the highest uh, that you can get for different thresholds. Yes, the worst case. So um, I'm just wondering if you are increasing the threshold and you are getting the highest inference attack, um, that is for a particular data set that, uh, that you are working on. Does the same threshold work for a different data sets? Uh, no, because usually on different data sets, the model prediction confidence, there is no guarantee they will be in the similar scale. So in this case, you know the training data set that you are using to train the model. Yes, because it's more like evaluation of the potential membership inference risk. If you want to perform like practical membership inference risk, you can follow Shockery's method using shallow training. So you first uh, you train a similar model as the target model and find some shallow training data set, shallow test data set, and train the inference classifier on that shallow tree and test the data sets with the shallow model and use that model to perform inference attack on your target model. Okay. So does the inference accuracy that you get with this threshold model comparable to the shadow models that you get? Almost the same. We indeed we evaluate both. Thank you. So thanks for the talk. I've been thinking about something that you said rather in the middle of the talk. So mm -hmm. basically there's some kind of conflict between um, resistance members. against adversarial examples and membership inference. And I'm, I'm not really convinced. Um, and I would ask you whether you can give me some kind of intuition. So not some experiments, but say why this is the case. Mm -hmm. Because my feeling is membership inference basically comes from the fact that a neural network remembers something of the training data mm -hmm. that maybe shouldn't remember. Yeah, yeah. And adversarial examples come from strange artifacts or strange things in the network that we do not yet understand. So how could these two things be um, opponents in a system or something like that or conflicting? Yeah, that's a great question. So I have to say, first of all, I'm not sure whether this is a real fundamental trade-off between the membership inference privacy and uh, adversary robustness because maybe in the future, we can design a perfect uh, robust uh, classifier with 100 adversary training accuracy and 100 adversary test accuracy. But in that case, I will not expect a membership inference attack works well. Second of all, our claim in the paper is mainly about seeing the current defense methods. They have the issue of increasing the membership inference risk. And the basic intuition is, you also mentioned that it, it's because the neural network will memorize the training data a little bit. Uh, while the current defense methods, they work by kind of, you can imagine the adversary defense method as augmenting a lot of uh, points around each training data to make the model keep the prediction keep the same for the adversary perturbation. This, I will say, kind of will make the neural network memorize the training point more. Yeah, to to piggyback on this, actually, so one one thing that's that's kind of interesting in the results you show is that, mm -hmm. um, and that's something that has been observed with adversarially trained models, is that they end up decreasing the accuracy on clean data. So in some sense, these models are overfitting more in that they're, they're getting 100% train accuracy, but they're getting much lower test accuracy. And so I think one, one experiment that you could consider adding here, which would be really interesting to see what mm -hmm. you'd get, 
is to, to take, say, the CIFAR 10 data set, mm -hmm. the training data set, and mislabel, say, 10% of the data. And so here, when you're going to train your model, you're probably still going to get 100% train accuracy. You're probably going to get 87% test accuracy, mm -hmm. um, but without any adversarial training. So you will not have gotten any robustness, but you will have driven the, the, the sort of overfitting up. And it would be interesting to see what, what membership inference would do there. So this would maybe let you disentangle somehow the contribution that comes merely from getting lower um, clean test accuracy and what actually comes from from robustness, and to be honest, I don't really know what, oh. what to expect from that. Yeah, that's a good point. So for your suggestion, we we don't perform such experiments, but for the follow-up work, we perform another experiment where we try to split the whole CFAS and training data set into two parts. The first part, we compute its adversary loss. The second part, we only compute the natural loss, and we combine them to kind of train the robust uh, CFATEN classifier, but only part of the training data set is used uh, for robustness. So the result is the training accuracy and test accuracy almost the same as the robust uh, CFATEN model here. But the inference accuracy is between the natural one and the robust one. So this will somehow resolve your problem. Any other questions? Okay, then let's thank the speaker again.